So I, I want to say um, that today's session has a pop. So um, we will be delivering a secret word that um, you can claim the POAP through the POAP app in your phone or in your computer. Um, I will uh, briefly give some minutes to Bianca um, to explain uh, how is that process. And uh, we will be giving the, the secret word in the chat so that everyone can, can uh, claim their their pop for this session. Awesome. Thank you, Juan. Juan, can you do you have the slide for the PO app? So if you go in your phone, in an app in your phone. Um, if you don't have the app in your phone, download the POAP app. Um, you need to put your wallet address that you collect your, your POAPs. Once you do that, you go to mint your POAP. Thank you, Juan. Um, then there is like a plus button over here. Then there's a secret word. That's the one we're using. And then you write down the secret word for today's session's insight. No. Once you do that, you can write it down in mind today's poet. <laughs> if you have any question, please um, reach out to me or you can write down in the chat. Um, and we can help you figure it out. Thank you. I pass it back to Hua. Now I will pass it uh, to Durga, that is the facilitator for today's call. And I will just um, take the, the co-host and admit people. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, okay, so let me share my screen here. Oh, yeah, you need to give me back the. Okay. Also, just um, see every some minutes, check if all people is joining the room. Sure. To admit them. Yeah. Yeah, it's no problem. Okay, so can you guys see the colorful screen there? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So I just got to get the uh, admittance thing going here so that I can keep track of that too. So, all right. So thank you guys all for coming. Um, so this is, uh, <clears throat> I think, the fourth time I've presented th this uh, to the Gravity uh, um, uh, group. The last two times I've had uh, sort of two sessions per uh, training, but I think this time it's one. So I'm going to have to put a lot into <laughs> into the one uh, training. But basically, um, uh, I'm Regis Chapman, Durga Das. I run a yoga studio here. You guys actually see me. Um, sort of in my yoga studio uh, most of the time. It looks like this. Um, um, so let's see. So who am I? I'm basically all of these things. Um, a bit of a autistic uh, polymath and and uh, uh, my partner is uh, Olympic medalist, uh, Pan Am Games medalist and Commonwealth Games medalist. Um, we had sort of talked about Gravity Dow is the beginning about being a shelling point for um, the kind of uh, solution that people choose in the absence of communication. You know, how do we treat each other when um, we don't have people to guide us and 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 other things? Let's admit some more folks. Um, and 
so as such, we basically have a, an aim to generate in our members and partner organizations, a proactive anti-fragile organizational culture with robust sense-making shared mental models and language systems, human-centric and ethical technology and services that bring together um, everyone, even in the absence of communication. So this is also very nicely harmonized with um, the mission for the token engineering commons. Um, and so right now we're basically uh, in phase one of kind of um, sort of, uh, you know, splitting from uh, token engineering commons in uh, in a practical sense, but if not, to, not at all really in the, um, in the uh, sort of ph philosophical sense. So this, uh, I think I originally, uh, did this because it was the first, uh, this was the first training, but the whole idea here is that, you know, um, yeah, there's some psychological shadows that exist inside of organizations and, and within ourselves. And so our work is really to uh, go in and try to help uh, people, you know, handle some of those things. And to, uh, and so today I'm going to be talking about sort of the the depth and, and complexity aspects of uh, how all of these things work and the big picture, um, you know, concepts and ideas that we can use to uh, and, and, and find uh, action modes and things that we can operate from that can uh, help us to um, build trust and, and resolve conflicts. The um, basic skills of a Graviton, I think are these fundamental things where we have to be able to be compassionate about what people are experiencing and um, I'm going to admit some more folks and mindful of, about you know the the complexity of the situation try to have a situational awareness uh, about what's going on to try to think in in these broad-minded ways so that we can uh, lead with our compassion and mindfulness um, in such a way that it can create connections and and allow for the the humanity and in, in what is uh, arguably often a um, uh, a very busy situation and fraught with a lot of um, you know stress and the primary thing I think is to be able to sort of be uh, moderative and be able to hold space. And so I've created a graphic that actually talks about, um, you know, the nature of uh, how one is to uh, go about holding space, right? So basically there are three uh, things about participating. Um, there's the curated material. So if you're gonna, for example, attend a training like this one, there's a bunch of curated material like this graphic and other things, uh, concepts and other things that have already been created. So we as Gravitons and when we pop into other communities, they already have a kind of um, cultural dynamic. They have certain ways to go about doing things. And it's our job to sort of step in there and figure out how, um, how, the, the moder how to moderate between the um, discussions which have you know, in the cross-pollination side of the thing may have uh, stopped being generative and become, you know, otherwise uh, sort of unhealthy. And then, um, you know, also to sort of uh, work with the existing culture as it is, and then gradually sort of make changes. So this is a, this is a model that can work um, <clears throat> at multiple levels. So if you're participating in a group that's got a sort of bounded systems thinking, sort of got to get things done sort of mode, um, you can work in that participation model across the top. And that sort of handles um, how to participate with, in with informed consent and deal with expectations and safety, allow for people to talk about what's alive in them and to discover things. And then on the, the backside of that to make sense of it and then um, then you know create or modify whatever processes uh, might exist um, <clears throat> or need to change. And so what you can see is that you would basically go around this model over and over again until hopefully what you would end up in, it would be a, a more complexity thinking um, 
you know, a set of processes. And that I think is, um, you know, a lot of what we're trying to do here in gravity is to uh, allow people to, um, to go through a process where the, the, uh, we often talk about how we're a conflict, you know, management group, but at the same time, um, we have to be more, more broad minded, because if we're going to actually resolve conflicts, we have to be able to transform them. And so that automatically would take whatever curated system that existed and transform it into something which is automatically more complex, more inclusive, and more um, hopefully better for uh, people. So um, my the basis for what I talk about is often um, you know dealing with the neuroanatomy of the brain, the left and right brain, and and there are just two basic ways of thinking, um, and when they combine together the whole idea is to sort of work in this sort of paradoxical way so we can come up with uh, the third alternative that might exist uh, between what it seems to be uh, two apparent opposites. So you'll see that this thing is actually, um, this thing that I'm talking about is repeated over and over, um, you know, in this process. And so when I'm talking about, um, you know, decolonization, uh, part of the thing is to recognize that uh, colonization takes place fundamentally in the divided thinking brain, like the, the extractive exploitive um, you know, monetary system that we're all participating in outside of the world of cryptocurrencies is all because our culture uh, validates, teaches, and acts like the only thing that exists is this divided way of thinking, which has inevitable um, effects in terms of people and so we'll we'll say that this thing has more or less value this person has more or less value this uh theory has more or less value things like this so the idea being that um the the point of my work is to try to get people to um include the unified thinking more which is the the right brain and to the ideal way that we can talk about uh, these processes by using um paradoxes so with that in mind, I basically um, I would I'm going to upload this to uh, a Google thing uh, after the meeting, and so I would suggest that you click on these links and and watch these two videos. Uh, one is Jill Bolte Taylor's very inspirational uh, "My Stroke of Insight," where she had a um, uh, hematoma that that exploded in her brain, and she had to watch her own sort of brain devolve. It's kind of cool in a way because she was a brain anatomist and so she got to see it from the inside and sort of then see how her right brain sort of took over and how she could experience the unified nature of reality. This is also true um, in the years that I spent um, living in a Hindu monastery. A lot of the spiritual stuff that you go through and, and study is really about validating the sort of right hemisphere of the brain. And I think, um, what that does, it has implications for how we behave in society, and and you can actually see, um, you know, how these things uh, roll up. I have a much larger presentation that includes uh, all of this stuff um, that I talk about. That's really specific to decolonization, um, but it usually takes you know a two or three hour period to explain all of it. So I'm not going to get into the whole thing. I'm just going to you know stay with the 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 key points here but if you can just understand that there are two fundamental ways to think and one is divided and the other is unified and in order to decolonize ourselves we have to understand the the various um, reflexive uh, divided ways of thinking we've been brought up with in our education system and otherwise and um and the uh, ethical systems that we need to create considering the unified um, side of the picture. So yeah, thanks for the uh, thanks for the link. It's the same link uh, that I have here. So um, one of the most inspiring things, and in fact, when I when I left the ashram, living for the uh, for where I lived for many years, I saw this video and I was like, oh well, that was what I was doing all this time. So it was a very nice. Um, way to contextualize some of this work that I had been doing, um, you know, internally. And then my when I came to the token engineering commons, I saw that actually what we were doing is we were doing this thing called the cultural build. And then what I realized is 
was that the internal relationships that we were having around um, our own divided brains had been um, uh, um, very much revealed in terms of the, um, I'm going to admit some more folks, um, very much revealed in the way that our social forms are, are happening. So, you know, sexism, racism, transphobia, all these things all come from <clears throat> this divided way of looking at things. And the whole point of this is that, that really, are you there? Somebody just showed up. And, um, okay, so um, really in the end, if you think only in divided ways, you're gonna always end up in this sort of colonizer worldview, right? You're gonna end up in this divided way of thinking. You're gonna end up in in a kind of narcissistic approach because you know all you're doing is reflexively dividing all the time. And it should be pretty obvious by looking at the culture that we're doing that all the time. Now, the thing is, is that all the pretexts for this kind of narcissistic abuse um, are just, um, you know, relatively simplistic, right? So the, the point of all of this is to, to sort of understand how that's tricked us and the financial system, which because I'm talking to folks in, in DAOs and, and in token engineering commons and often, you know, DAOs are, are <clears throat> focused so on you know crypto economics i'm sort of heading a little bit toward that but my point about that is just that the way we treat each other the way we educate each other the way we socialize where we talk to each other all of these things um the in the the financial systems and instruments that we've created on the back of this divided way of thinking all are revealed inside of the um inside of the culture that that basically just makes even unified things um, into divided things. And so, um, so yeah, so here's a whole bunch of lists of different things that I've sort of observed about the nature of, of these different social forms, right? And so prior to colonization, what we had was you could have a, you could have a, the whole entire world was sort of in a un, more or less unified way of thinking as a whole. And so you can have a, somebody like a Genghis Khan or somebody come along and do a very divided, you know, colonizer kind of approach to things, and, but their, their actions would be sort of reabsorbed back into the overlying unified mentality that existed on the planet at the time. Well, with since colonization by Europe and, and uh, others, you know, basically that that is now a worldwide phenomenon. So the 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 thermostatic um, uh, uh, balance that used to be able to happen with a generally unified approach to things. Um, please do meet yourself, by the way, whoever's uh, talking there. Um, and uh, so it used to be that, you know, we could contextualize ourselves in this unified way, but now we have an entire planet that's covered in divided colonizer worldviews. And so we almost have to, to um, rebalance things uh, so that the unified mindset can, can come back, right? And so it's, in my view, the, the, the whole reason why cryptocurrencies exist uh, is to try to redress that balance. But if we don't do that internally with ourselves, then we can't, um, we can't really see the root causes of, of all of these issues. And so, um, so my work recently has been very much, um, you know, uh, working along this sort of subversive line and trying to uh, diagnose this without having to say, you know, uh, some of the things that you, you hear often in, in um, you know, the existing culture. I think everybody is suffering under this uh, social form. And, um, but some of us have a certain amount of blindness to it that we're not aware of. So uh, it's my feeling and my reason for participating in token engineering commons is to try to help individual people to understand and recognize what's going on. And then that'll make them, you know, more uh, uh, able to create financial instruments and deal with each other in such a way that we can undo the legacy of, of that colonization. So, like I said before, we still have, you know, two monetary systems and, um, you know, there's an extract ex exploitative versus the aligned and generative side of the picture. And of course, you know, uh, from dealing with uh, 
dealing with the Dow side of things that there are regenerative um, eco villages and things that are all coming up. All all of these are a response to to that type of uh, setup as well. So what I was looking for was just a unifying framework in which to understand how all of these things works. And, and there's a certain amount of inherent complexity to it. So the, uh, the next slide is about, about working with four basic principles um, that are set up in sort of two halves. One is the trust creation side. The other is the conflict management side, right? And so my uh, my emphasis is really on, uh, I don't know very much about principle D at all, but principle A, principle B, and principle C are kind of my jam. And, and there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, for example, there's still more people to admit. Um, so I'm basically here talking to you today and right now about sort of um, the complexity and how we uh, go through and develop things and what are the different kinds of mental models that we can use. And then I'll talk a little bit about um, Ostrom's principles and how uh, the commons kind of binds all of these things together. Um, so each principle is a, is a modality of creating a shared language of sense making, understanding and connection. That's super important because I find that a lot of people who work in this space, they'll spend a lot of time learning Solidity or Python or any number of programming languages. And yet we don't spend hardly any time talking about how is it that we get along and what are the shared languages <laughs> of that we can use to actually get along and, and what are the different ways in which we can um, we can uh, uh, connect and understand what we're doing in this sort of, you know, un unified uh, framework. So it seems to me that as a graviton, you you need to have a unified vision. You need to be able to to uh, look at these four principles like tools that you can use to unify our thinking. And being gravitons, it's actually our primary role is to, to sort of hold that unified space when other people cannot, right? Even, <laughs> even yourself, sometimes you'll find yourself being unable to, you know, hold that space. And so you might need, you know, a graviton or a friend to kind of, you know, come in here. But it's also true that, that your confidence at this sort of thing can be, you know, educated and, and expanded in, internally. And so this training is an attempt to, um, you know, to do that. And it's a lifelong process, generative process that really you need to, um, to kind of work with and understand that, that it's an, you know, evolutionary process of where we're continuously curating new uh, things and new um, methodologies for connecting with each other, new, uh, new mental models and other things. And so um, we can improve our ability to curate, to moderate and to cross pollinate. Um, and then what that does is that it, it will give you the ability to see into the, 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 the unified and divided viewpoints of people who are often, um, you know, uh, sort of broken up by a conflict or just the inability because our society doesn't train us to really think in any unified ways, um, you know, to, to learn how to do that uh, in the first place. So principle A, basically around uh, trust creation, I'm really um, a fan of you know these three basic things. One one is the Kinefin framework, which I won't go into here, but we can talk about uh, in another context. Spiral dynamics and integral theory, um, which essentially are um, theories of everything that give you a, a sense of how people um, can. Uh, uh, develop their own internal uh, work and then um, you know deliberately developmental organizations and and met inside of a met meta modern system which i think um, token engineering comments and other DAOs are attempting to become but you're not really meta modern unless you're trying to care for all of the individual participants in the system and not just uh, fiscally either but the the overall psychological health of uh, the participants in that system Principle B is about Ostrom's principles. This is a very beautiful um, graphic that I found today that actually talks about this. The gravity group is um, 
is focused on on about half of of these things specifically so four five six and eight so the point of um, four five and six should be obvious to people who are participating in an individual DAO um, and then the um, the responsibility for governing the common in nested tiers so that would mean our relationships with other uh, with other DAOs uh, you know, would be affected. And so it's also just a basic psychological truth that you can't extend to someone else that which you have not extended to yourself. So if you're not compassionate to yourself, it's not likely you're going to be compassionate to others. So it's also true that if you don't care for all the individual participants in your group, then when you reach out to other um, DAOs and that relationship is going to be more uh, fraught. And so uh, part of the idea behind uh, gravity is to not only improve all of the individual participants, but as a side effect, you would end up having um, an excellent way of dealing with things on the uh, on the down to DAO side of the picture and, and when you're interacting and having partnerships and things like that. So I think uh, that's sort of implied by the fact that the common stack started the TEC and the TEC started gravity and Omega and all these other groups that kind of work uh, independently. So it's also true that there's a bit of an evolution uh, that I've noticed here. Um, and I think that, um, I think gravity and the gravity now and, and just recognizing that there is a kind of step two to this. What I've noticed is that a lot of people are like, I'm tired of this abusive extractive system. I'm just going to go over and jump into a DAO, right? But what they don't really realize is that they need to um, work on, you know, uh, how to deprogram and decolonize from the uh, abusive extractive system and take back agency and autonomy. Uh, we've been trained away from knowing how to retain our own agency and autonomy and how to take responsibility. And so it's a it's a complex thing. You have to have a lot of trauma informed, uh, compassionate uh, groups and teams and people who, who have language around those things. And so, um, you know, gravity and, and gravitons are all about, you know, trying to uh, get those things um, uh, worked on and and uh, and make the participants in the system uh, better at all of that so that they they can actually fulfill the promise of the DAO, which is really a kind of um, a digital version of an intentional community from uh, you know that has happened for a long time, you know so, um, and I also, uh, you know, I often say that th this step number two is the shadow side of the psychological shadow side of, of DAOs, right? Where you don't just get to skip over all that other work. And, and I do notice that, that even in the token engineering comms, it took an entire year to do a cultural build. There are still parts of that that, that we missed, you know? So uh, we have to, to think about that as a, as a continuous improvement process rather than an individual thing. And so I think, um, by participating in gravity by becoming a graviton, then you'll become a lot more um, uh, informed about how to how to deal with all of these things, and then you can better um, uh, represent um, and and frankly become a DAO. Um, and I've I've taken it further in the sense that I believe that there's once you are actually uh, a DAO that gives you a different sort of ground floor on which a place of strength from which to come, where then what do you do and and, and so you have a, a a stable decentralized structure from which then individuals can sort of grow and become the best versions of themselves um in in step four here where you know a deliberately developmental organization would would help and and assist with that uh and instead of just um caring about its own self and not caring about the individuals participating in the system this is a um, this is a, a view of the the AQUAL and spiral dynamics um, uh, theory of everything. <laughs> this is the all quadrants, all levels model, and it may seem a little bit confusing, but there is a very simple um, you know narrative uh, framework that you can use to understand this. If you find yourself in the individual interior, that's where you generally are going to operate from, right? Your general self and consciousness is going to have a certain developmental level, and you're going to be, you know, in the 
the achiever self or the sensitive self uh, side of the thing, because that's generally where most of society is now. So you'll be kind of trained up like that. And so if you interact with a group like the token engineer in commons, which is really, um, really green here, right, and maybe bordering on the integral, um, then there may be, if you're coming from a, a, an egocentric self and try to interact with a pluralistic group over here, there could be a conflict in terms of the way that you imagine, uh, you know, the culture working. So, so these uh, these kinds of tools give us some way of kind of grasping the the larger forces at work when it comes to, you know, dealing with conflicts. Right. So it's also true that if you've got a whole bunch of people who are working out of the egocentric self, like a lot of these, um, uh, what do you want to call them, you know, uh, shitcoin groups or whatever, <laughs> who are just trying to take advantage of people, you know, that's that's a that's a recipe for for conflict. Right. So people think they're coming into a pluralistic thing when, in fact, the 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 cultural worldview of whatever group, you know, for those kinds of coins uh, is really like a a very different, uh, very different thing. So, um, so, and then there's a system that's created by that culture and worldview. And so what I've noticed, there's a kind of, um, there's a kind of uh, uh, pendulum that goes between the, the individual self and the consciousness and the social system and environment that, that sort of uh, is the result of the culture and worldview. So, the individual participants influence the culture and worldview, which then influences the system. And then that system then works backward and influences the cultural worldview and the individuals participating in the system. So it's it's important from a, a large standpoint to be able to kind of get um, how that works and to have in your mind, you know, that you can evaluate yourself and work with other people who might be, um, you know, developed out here in tier two. Um, to to understand how to to develop yourself and then how to do, to develop the culture and worldview of the groups that you're participating in and as gravitons we're often called in specifically and hired specifically to accomplish goals like that so that's why we're sort of talking about it here um and then um you know, we can use other tools, and this is just one of many, but I wanted to give you uh, an example of a, of a worksheet. And if you were, um, if you're paying a, a decent amount of attention, you might have noticed that way back here, I had, um, I have included the, um, the, the polarity mapping um, <clears throat> infinity symbol behind, right, because um, it actually relates directly. So if you if you uh, take a look at the way you can actually just sit down with a with a group and and try to take a look at this, this is basically a worksheet that you could use to figure out the ways in which um, uh, you know conflicts can occur. Because oftentimes it's uh, a conflict between sort of two false dualities: people who are afraid of change, uh, people who are you know feel like they're stuck in a too overly stable system, and there can grow a conflict between that. So. In gravity, what we do is uh, we develop and work within and uh, inventory and 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 cr and create mental models and uh, processes and educate people on methodologies to resolve different kinds of conflicts. And this is just you know sort of one of those. <clears throat> and you can see that this is highly correlated to the to the left right brain stuff that I'm talking about too. Um, Currently, uh, what we're working on some uh, right now is uh, we're, we're one of the finalists in the Commons Prize. Uh, currently, in phase one of, of Gravity DAO, which is kind of uh, pulling us out of uh, Token Engineering Commons, and uh, we have our website, uh, which is uh, in a coming soon mode right now. Um, and I've got links to all of uh, the, the processes. So if you want to participate in helping us deal with the website or do any planning or, um, and then uh, uh, Bianca has got the psychology working group. And um, so these are some of the other um, things that we're doing. I will say that um, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking to you about now, the narrative things that I'm uh, talking about, we'll be offering a, a group course between the Omega group uh, and uh, gravity that sort of talks about how to 
um, look at a particular thing, a website or graphics like the ones that I create uh, about doing narrative construction, because um, often narratives are the way uh, in which people will think. So if you have two opposing conflictual narratives, um, you know, learning how to sort of understand each side of that, break that up, and then find a way to weave those narratives back together is a very useful um, skill for uh, a graviton. So I'm happy to answer any and all questions at this point. Anything I, I might have missed there, uh, Juan? Yeah, I, I think that maybe <clears throat> um, you, you've gone really deep into a lot of, of complex uh, concepts, but it all can be yep. explained really easily. So we can, yep. we can also make some some like memes or metaphors to, to like explain mm. what we're talking about divided and unified and and um, yeah, how how can this change of approach uh, make an impact on how you you face a situation? Yeah, and and I'm basically just saying that that there are sort of three things about the way this works. There's there's your own you know internal thing. So like for example, I have all autism have, have to, to deal with, with my own brain, brain right so and then there's um what society is trying to tell me about the fact that i have autism and most people generally that i have to then be able to parse that so i can figure out is that me or is that society or is that my parents or different kinds of things right and so when we're dealing with conflicts um you know uh it's important to be able to parse out all those things and to have tools to kind of break that up so that you can understand the the underlying narratives and hidden things which you know kind of exist there so um so yeah i mean, I, I have gone really deep into you know a series of complex things but i my the point about all of this is that i find that um the colonized approach is one of the Sexualization, where where we have removed our ability to think with complexity or think broadly, and so what I'm attempting to do is to uh, give you guys a series of uh, mental models and other things into which you can contextualize your work with the gravity DAO and, and with figuring out how to resolve conflicts uh, as you uh, participate in those things. Yeah, I remember you have this beautiful example, um, like. If you accidentally you are walking and you bump your finger to the bed, right. you don't yell at your finger. That's because right. You know that your finger is part of yourself. That's right. So that's a unified way of thinking, right? Why so, why, why do we yell and judge others? Um, exactly. When we are like all part of of, of a united uh, entity. Yeah. A, a united society so um yeah, that, yeah that example i loved it yeah and and i guess what i'm saying is just that it's been my observation that a persistent decontextualization where where you know when i go to scratch my head i'll accidentally poke myself in the eye and i'm you know i'm just there yelling at my finger that seems to be the way our culture works now <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's just the dumbest thing in the world to me. And so I like, I want a solution for that. What's a what's a way that I can think about this so that when I accidentally do poke myself in the eye, I can go, no, 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 it's okay. Do you know what I'm saying? And 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 so um so the the point of it is is that yeah, it's true what what uh what Sean is saying, you know, this stuff is only complex because people have um, made it complex, right? We, we have, um, yeah, we often, you know, kind of supplicate to people who are experts and other things. And I like to think that, um, that we can, uh, we can all figure out how to, how to do this stuff, right? Sarah, do you have a question? I see your hand is raised. Yes, thanks. First, uh, thank you for this great presentation, which uh, oh. summarizes um, all these uh, uh, practices to build a healthy community. And uh, what I wanted to ask you is, um, what do you think that the technology or the DAO 
adds to it? And how do you think this can survive in some way, uh, large scale and technology? Because we are talking on one part of practices, of uh, an intention behind these practices. Um, and then comes the tokens and all the technology stuff, and also the large scale in terms of uh, number of people. Um, so I'd be very interested um, about your views uh, of this release, the DAO la layer, technology layer, uh, additional to it. So there are three basic examples that I like to give that's related to this. Okay, so so um, so think about like you know, uh, let's say somebody, a figure like Jonas Salk, right? So he discovered a you know, vaccine for a, a debilitating disease and then gave it away to the world, right? So I, I don't know if you guys know what a Dobsonian telescope is, but I know the guy who invented the Dobsonian telescope, <laughs> that John Dobson, he was a Vedantic monk and lived in a Hindu monastery for 30 years. And, and so like, he was one of my mentors. And so, so he actually invented the Dobsonian telescope and gave away that. And so now he has made it. And he used to have a thing called the sidewalk astronomers would, you know, he pointed at the, uh, on San Francisco and he'd point, you know, and people come look at Saturn. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And people are like, homie, I had no idea you could build something from Home Depot, you know, that could see Saturn. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, so you've got this sort of egalitarian sort of mindset that's thinking about the commons, thinking about, right? And so that's what I was saying about gravity being so rooted in Ostrom's principles and the groundedness of the commons. And what what's happened with us is the colonizer mindset, basically, I mean, you can see it here uh, where I live in British Columbia, you've got, um, uh, you know, what's called crown land technically owned by the Queen of England. So you've got, <laughs> you've got, you know, so she just sends the, the Queen is like, yeah, go in and cut down all the trees, you know, all the old growth trees. So that's the way we tend to treat the commons. You know what I mean? We treat water this way. We treat, you know, native people this way. We treat every, you know, like, so this is what we do with the commons. This is an extractive process. But what if we were to value the commons instead, like a Jonas Salk or a, you know, and then what, what you would end up with would be, what, what one of my favorite things is like Hinduism is a decentralized um, religion. I don't know if you're aware of this, but it, Hinduism, the, the Indian continent was, was invaded for like a thousand years consecutively, never ending. <laughs> And so there's just so many people just constantly invading it, right? So that's actually kind of what the financial system is is now. We and we just have this extractive system. So the response that the Hindus had was that they took all of the religion away from the temples and away from the churches, and now every Hindu's got a locked room in their house where they worship, and that's how it works for them. Right. That's, that's a decentralized religion. It's a, a billion people. <laughs> and so like for me, the original sort of crypto thing, you know, is is got a bunch of other examples that you can use to see how um, people respond. Right. And so so a mega group is about trying to create people who would respond like Jonas Salk and like John Dobson to stress, right? Or, or to their intelligence or to their ability to deal with complexity, right? So Jonas Salk, not everybody can discover a vaccine for, a, because not everybody's that smart, but those people then can, you know, so for me, uh, I think about, you know, uh, people who work in token engineering to be um, people like that. They, we want to encourage people like that, teach them about ethics and, and undo the damage that's been done by the extractive abusive system and allow them to, you know, come to these other uh, ways of thinking. And then as a population, then we can be wise enough to make a decentralized choice like the Hindus did about, you know, decentralizing, um, you know, their religion or their, their worship or their, you know, their own internal practices that ground them, whatever you want to call those things, their spirituality. So, you know, we can do, we can do that with finance too. And it's also true that, you know, abusive systems in order to replace them, you have to kind of create parallel systems, which, and, and it's important that you have people like Jonas Salk and John Dobson who are creating these parallel systems that don't just recreate another problematic system that's going to blow up in, in the faces of people three or four generations down the line. Right. <clears throat> so that's kind of, uh, I, did I answer your question? I guess we com I completely agree on, on uh, all your um, 
uh, how do you say, um, on uh, the realization on what goes wrong. And I guess my question was really focused on um, the link with technology, because I, uh, I had uh, been... Uh. I had been discussing, yeah. for example, with people of Disco that say yeah. that after a certain number of people, it gets really hard to maintain compassion, empathy, trust. Yeah. And so for me, it's a key question, you know, and also uh, how do you tokenize uh, taking care of, you know, how do you sure. separate uh, taking care of her from being it, inefficient? It, and then doesn't, doesn't it take away kind of the spirit yeah. of it? How do we deal with it? So uh, I have some, I no some ideas answer, about that. Mm. No, there are good answers. And actually, we're talking about them a lot in, in um, token engineering comments. Let's just be clear, right? Um, uh, the extractive abusive mindset is the, the mindset of a merchant. It's just straight mm -hmm. up, right? One thing, one person has this amount of value and it, it, all objects are evaluated according to value. I mean, even look at how our mentality is about our psychology. You know, do I have worth? <laughs> do I have value? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And like, what is it that I do value? Like, it's just subversively true that we have learned to treat ourselves in this kind of way. So what I'm suggesting is that, that um, technology itself isn't the problem, but technology has typically been used to aggregate wealth for the already wealthy, right? That's just typically how it works, <laughs> right? So it's just, so, so up to now, you know, it's, it's like, you know, merchants have just basically merchants run the world now. Nation states are just figureheads and, and, you know, um, <clears throat> it's the merchants that decide everything. And, and the mentality of having this thing is worth more or less because of some uh, arbitrary system, um, you can undo that problem with technology. So let's say, for example, an example of decontextualization is let's make everything into one token. Well, how about we take the old Hindu idea about the eight forms of wealth and instead of um, smashing it all down into a single token that we actually talk about the circle of genius and social wealth and, 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 and all these different kinds of things that can happen where it can fill us up and make us feel wealthy rather than smashing it all down into one decontextualized thing. That's, that's what colonization does. That's what colonizers do. There can be only one, right? So my point is, is that we often, we often do this. And so I spend a lot of time, anybody who's been in groups with me, I spend a lot of time saying, can we make this broader, right? And I've got, a, I've got an actual, um, uh, you know, uh, those of you who've been in groups with me in the past uh, might hear me say the words, I have a graphic for that a fair bit, because I almost always do. Um, let me just find it real quick so I can uh, uh, talk about what you're talking about. So here it is. So here is here is the Ikigai that was made by um, the Dada group, right? And so my influence with this was to add the eight forms of wealth around the outside, right? So if you're talking about smashing everything down into a single token, right? I think that's a mistake because then we're not recognizing the humanity, which is inherent in these different kinds of ways that we're doing things, right? And so, um, so yeah, I mean, I can, I, I've shared this in other places, but I can share it with you guys too. Yeah, but yeah, it's, that's what I'm saying is, is that technology is created, but you have to have, we have to have, we have to actively create people who are, um, thinking about the commons before themselves and so that we can then take that technology and leverage it for the use of the commons rather than against, you know, and, and, and what I'm suggesting is that this left and right brain way of thinking is all about, you know, shifting the balance of that for, for people and making it so that um, more people can uh, understand that uh, they've been lied to by society, they've been educated in a, in a weird way that makes it, um, Jonathan Haidt calls it the weird, the Western Europe, um, uh, educated, industrialized, rich, democratic nations, that, that, that the amount of influence that goes into the, our, our brain wiring, it actually, uh, for weird versus non-weird societies, let's say native or indigenous peoples versus um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, these, 
these colonized societies um, that he even goes to visual processing. So if you draw like a line on a piece of paper, right, for a, a, a weird um, mentality, they're going to see they're going to see the square and they're going to see the line as two separate entities, whereas a non weird or a native population would regard those two things in relationship with each other. Right. It, it is so deeply held. And I, I feel like we need to recognize the problem and then work within these new communities to educate our way out of that uh, sort of issue that, that we're um, uh, facing. So hopefully that answered your question in terms of technology. And I'm going to get to um, Wonka now. Yeah, I, I just um, w want to share an idea that Ben one, once um, um, wrote, and that um, the change we want to, to do um, in DAOs is because DAOs will be new institutions. And if we don't intentionally change um, the way or the personas we want to have um, in, in participating in this environment, um, if, if we don't work on, on those people, we will end up having like um, extractive doubts. And, and um, if, if, if we work on, on that um, infrastructure of the new institutions, then we will have a high impact on, on the future because those new institutions will, will build the future. And if we Indeed. work on, on that ethic um, for these new institutions, we will have a direct impact on the, on the future. And yeah, I will pass it to, to Sean uh, too. Yeah, no, um, yeah, I just so much information here and it's and it's all so extremely valuable. And I really wish that this could be two sessions because this is just absolutely fascinating for me. Um, By the way, I'll be here as long as you guys want. So I have no time limit for myself. I, I unfortunately do have to drop it too. unfortunately. It's all um, good. So, I'm just telling you my, my thing. Yeah, so. but uh, I, I don't know. I like I think my major takeaway from this is and something that really resonates with me is like something you said that you can't show someone compassion if you don't show that for yourself. And I think that that can go up towards the organizations too, right? So if, if organizations right. are formed in a way and they're not like owning these, these thought processes and this way of doing things, then it resonates in, in their actions. And I think that through like this training specifically, um, if we can kind of find that place in ourselves, and and come to these conflicts from that place we're also opening up these people that are having conflicts to this way of thinking and that's i think right. that that's so it's so important like not not just for DAOs. i'm saying like for the yeah. evolution of humanity like this is that's right this is huge and 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 it's something like if you can just be open-minded and and really like take this in and, and own it. It's, it's, it's really huge. And I just, I really want to thank you for sharing this with us, Regis. Yeah. Thank you so much. I, I keep this uh, thing as a reminder. It's one of the, one of the spiritual teachers that my partner uh, loves. And, and this is in like a little calendar thing. that has got some reminders and, and uh, the, the teacher of this current teacher that we're, you know, used to say, who are you to set right the world? You have to first rectify yourself and your own mind. And when the mind becomes right, then everything will appear all right. Look within yourself. But then if you're going to act on the basis of that, then you can, you can act from a place of, um, am I the doer of this thing? You know, non-doership is really big because you want to, in many ways, you want to act on behalf of the universe, right? But if you still think that you are the unique, you know, contributor to this, or I donated so much money, or I did, you know, I created this token that's going to change the world. That's, that's more of that same sort of colonizer mindset. Do you know what I mean? I got mine, you know, hustle culture, you know, whatever. So that's, you know, so thanks for, for, for recognizing that. Yeah. Uh, any, anybody else uh, want to point something out? A Contessa or Mo or Justina or Nicola, David, Adrian, Heather. Oh, Guillermo. Okay, go ahead, Guillermo. Yes, thank you, Dervidasa. First, uh, congratulations for your talk. Very amazing. 
And I could say that uh, in one of your charts, we can see the steps, how to convert to a DAO. And I think the really challenge is that we are going to have in the step two and three is because we have to, to be confident that the realistic thing is that the traditional way we are organized is by a few groups of power, right? That's right. They are, they are really interested in keep that power. Yeah. I think that the real challenge is how, how are we going to convince them or how are they going to convince themselves that they need to change? I think this is a really change for, yeah. for Raviton and, and the organization. Yeah, and I think it harkens back to Ostrom's principles. So if we're doing mutual monitoring, what are we monitoring for? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, I would like somebody to say that somebody like Griff or Livy or how effective are they at breaking up and distributing the power that they have because they're people who are there at the foundation of this thing? How effective are they at that? I would reward them for giving away their power. Right. You can see that Griff is amazing at that. You can see that Liv is amazing at that. Right. But it's a thing we don't measure. <laughs> but why? <laughs> right. So like so so I would want to look at all these metrics. How effective have you been at deprogramming yourself from the abusive extractive economy? Do you know what I'm saying? How effective have you been at decolonizing yourself or taking up a unified perspective? Right. I would want to have metrics on that stuff and not you know, many of the other things that I see DAOs <laughs> actually um, putting metrics on. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, um, yeah. Continue. Those of you who need to go, you know, you're, you're welcome to uh, go, but I'm going to, like I say, I'm going to, I'm going to stay. And um, so you, I can answer all the rest of your questions until they're done. So we're at the top of the hour and I wanna respect people's time, but um, I'm, I'm off today, so I don't have any time constraints. I just Go want ahead. to um, oh. that uh, next week we will have Morgan around trauma sensitive and anti-oppressive culture. But yeah, I will op open the mic for Nicola and for Aloysius. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Yep. Awesome. I just want to thank you. Uh, I know I see your name, Regis Chapman, but I know they call you Durga Das. Yeah. Durga Das. Yeah, this is Durga Das, means servant. <laughs> thank you. I really, really deeply appreciate your presentation today. I love the presentation. I'd love to get a link for it. Oh, <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll, I'll also. I gravity. want to say, I want to say that uh, everything you've shared deeply resonates, and you know I'm pretty freshly only three months through uh, part of a Give It team, and uh, I've been the last year high from Costa Rica, uh, part mm. of building intentional communities on the ground. We were successful enough to you know um, have our own association. Uh, set up and founded uh, and we are actually actively working on our microeconomy. We are going to launch our own DAO soon. I mean, I mean it's really uh, beautiful to, to be part of this whole new evolution and growth and what it's coming with Web3 and DAO and sociocracy and all these amazing tools. While I do agree 100% that the work starts within ourselves because if we do not exemplify, if we do not adopt the, the principles that are just so deeply rooted in, rooted in our culture and understand and be able to zoom out, we only, we'll be hardly to, um, I mean, how can we really uh, participate in this change and bring solutions to the conflict, which conflict is part of everyday life. And it's actually, yep. I've never grown more uh, and my, it really, my relationships were never stronger if there were not the conflicts there that we were able to work through together. 
Uh, yeah. But it does take a lot of personal work, a lot of work with the ego and really right. um, taking, putting off the personal agenda and looking at the bigger picture only in that, only this, this way we can really aim and try to do bigger things. Well, so and, I, yeah, yeah, and it's interesting what, what I'm talking about, the left and the right, those things are not opposites. One includes the other. Do you see what I'm saying? So it's not that you know, but but the divided way of thinking sets up a false duality about everything. Do you know what I'm saying? And and then it is actually the ego is nothing but a construction of those mistakes. It is a is a thing you have to put in effort to maintain, right? <laughs> so so it's like here a I'm, puzzle. I'm yeah, here it's I am like making a, a fallacy. And and then I'm going to validate that fallacy over and over again. And then on top of that, I'm going to build a whole nother group of house of cards. And I'm going to keep validating all of this stuff. And then I'm going to call myself, you know, by my, this name. And and the value of having another name, I did, I figured out was that you, 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 you have to look at your identity. I went from being a king, right, Sir Regis. <laughs> the, it's good to be the king to being a servant, right? And it's very much like a paradoxical. Uh, way of looking at that. So it, I, I almost feel like it, groups like yours should take on a different name for what role you're currently inhabiting in the DAO or whatever, in a sense, right? Because then it would change your identification as to what's going on. So I, I just, sorry to add to that, but I, I wanted to just uh, add that. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. 100% agree. Yes. Yes, for sure. Um, I had something to to respond, but it, it just went away. But uh, <laughs> sorry about that. This is a this is a beautiful discussion. Yes, and I agree. Oh, uh, it's coming back. It's coming back. I didn't want to say that we. I mean, that's the that's the beauty of duality, right? We're living in a world of contrast. So how can we embrace it all, um, and and find a peace with it all? Because I used to run away from conflict. Now it's my like I find so much passion in it. So. It's really just changing the perspectives and making new relationship with yourself and with right. all the narratives you have in your mind. Right. Well, and and the other thing that happens with this culture is is that it actually the cult the divided culture fosters immaturity because the from my definition of maturity means your ability to resolve apparent dualities, right? And to transcend and include those two things in a common understanding that would make it so that both of those things are both valid, but also no longer just pulling you like <laughs> you're being drawn and quartered. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, you have to, you have to pull yourself up and out of that and, and create a kind of thing. And, and that is the process itself of maturity of repeating that over and over and over again. So I could be 70 years old and be a man, baby, like we see in public, you know, life all over the place now, <laughs> but, you know, but what I'm saying is the culture does that. And so we have the chance to create our own thought culture and to create our own, you know, make decisions that are, that are in fact mature and that would, that would, uh, uh, systems that wouldn't enable us to transcend and include apparent dualities into a larger understanding and recontextualize our lives. And so a lot of what I do is I just, you know, flood people with contacts <laughs> and then, and then they're like, Oh my God, this is too much. Like, <laughs> but you know, I do that for a reason because I feel like that has to maybe break the hold of the decontextualized colonized uh, sort of way of it's, living. So. Yeah, I see, I see that you're bringing spirituality into practical world with, uh, with exactly. words that are understandable for for everyone, for a practical mind, for the left hemisphere, exactly. and I love it. So thank you so much. Yeah, for, you're welcome. Honored to you be so here. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aloysius. I look forward to hearing you. Mm. Mm. Hello, hello. Thank you. I did not know that. I think I was the jerk unmuted. I was, uh, I was weeding, and I didn't even know. I like, I went to go move towards the end, and I picked up my phone, and I was like, oh! I like turned my camera off. I was just aghast. I was like, oh gosh, I'm so sorry. It's um, all good. But it was, it was sweet to be with nature, listening to you, and uh, and experiencing the evolution of your presentations. Uh, that's a treat. Okay. Um, to see, to see the ways this has. Uh, I remember the presentations before I attended my first Graviton training. So they were different before then, evolved through then, have changed now and are now like this and are still 
changing. So it's just mm -hmm. awesome to watch these uh, graphics um, evolve because that's that's what happens over time. And it's yeah. beautiful to like visually see it. Um, I also wanted to thank you for the ways that you're able to contextualize really, really heavy stuff. Like one thing that I've learned in in a lot of the like trauma work that I've done is that it takes a lot of different approaches and modalities to break down what's like what's been done to us by our environments, right? Products of our environments. And and there's gonna be so many different ways to reach so many people. And there's gonna be like a need for so many people to speak to these things in so many different ways. So I just have a lot of appreciation. Like I will kind of, cause I'm autistic, I'll disassociate a little bit before I'll get activated by you. I'll have to be like, oh shoot, spacing out. Hey, and I'll like fidget or something and I'll be all right but I don't get activated by you. I don't like want to disassociate and be like, oh my gosh, because of something you had, like you keep it in a, like this English math place or something is kind of what it feels like for me. So I just, I want to thank you for your magic. Um, yeah. Thank you for the session. Thank you. Walter. I can't yet hear you, Walter. While Walter oh, um, solves his mic. Am I muted? Sorry. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there you are. Okay. Yeah, technology is great, right? <laughs> I'm still waiting for the paperless office. Um, so, yes, uh, nice meeting those amongst you I haven't met yet. And, you know, big hello to the few I have. So I've been only like wanting to learn from this initiative for about six months. And now that I'm three sessions late, I'm still hopeful. So what, what, what I wanted, since my focus is pretty much, uh, I'm kind of put my spirituality thing on hold a couple of years ago, as far as the active work, kind of back to societal, and uh, I'm kind of, what I observed uh, when I first got involved with DAOs in the DAO stack and Aragon ecosystems about three years ago is that people kept proposing cause-based, uh, political action-based DAOs, and they never ever got anything. They didn't even develop through the very initial stages and I was curious about that that somehow what those folks were envisioning and what DAO structures at the time offered really was not a match and lately there's been this uh, kind of labeling of impact DAOs but I don't necessarily see those really happen either so I'm wondering from this community what you're thoughts are about you know well, the, the wants and the outcomes well it seems to me that that um let's use it let's use a political example okay so if you look at the the sort of propaganda of the western mentality right that russia went through in the 90s they went through this whole glasnost period right where things you know we had uh, democracy showed up and in Russia and everything. <clears throat> but it's really funny because, you know, with the advent of Vladimir Putin and everything, um, you know, from our perspective, that was like 30 years of, geez, it must be nice to finally be Russia experiencing this kind of thing. This is the, the narrative that you hear a lot. But <laughs> the Russians, it was a nightmare because they've been, <laughs> they were just locked into their whole way, <laughs> you know, of doing everything. Everything was given to them. They had a good job. It was, apartment it wasn't a good apartment they had a car they wasn't a good car but they had something you know what i'm saying but then then the the moment democracy o opened up then all the kleptocrats showed up and took everything <laughs> and there was nothing left for any of them and so now you have to have a, another strong leader back you know in vladimir putin to put things right again 
so that's why you know that person has so so it's interesting to see how the the if you look at it from the inside right the shadow part they, they were not ready they didn't have tools so this is what i'm talking about with my step two thing on the on the screen you don't just jump over and just suddenly become a democracy in russia they have no competence at that they have they, they've lived for hundreds of years without that stuff do you know what i'm saying so there's just no way to just drop them into this because all you'll end up with is a bunch of people stealing money from them and and all those people are now billionaires right they were common street thugs before but now they're billionaires so you know i mean it's just because they weren't given they weren't given the the tools and the the mentality so what i'm saying is is that that i think that's as true of 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 DAOs as it is anything else because we just didn't address the underlying structural and 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 individual participatory systems that would evolve that to make it so that democracy was then viable for russia i i find this a lot in DAOs, and even in a group that's as forward thinking as token engineering commons there's all this psychological shadow of the legacy cultural code base that comes with you <clears throat> and you have to have a system that's prepared to handle all of those things and so that's what i would say is probably um if if you could uh uh you know look at your other DAOs. i, I would i would say that there is a uh, a whole lot of agreement about the way in which you should go about this thing because a lot of people go something's really wrong and then they go you know what it is it's just one thing <laughs> and then let's solve that one problem and then there's like the real problem is a thousand things but you know <laughs> you don't you don't do the work to to document those thousand things much less uh, put in you know systems in place that would allow you to evolve and subvert and 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 heal and and deal with all of the those other 999 things right so that's what I, you know, what, what I find. And that's why decontextualized colonized systems work so well is because um, if you if nobody knows anything about themselves or the systems on which any of this stuff is built, I mean, look at the financial system now. The nightmare that is moving from the current financial system to cryptocurrency is really difficult because all of the security, all of the other stuff is all on you. <laughs> There's just this massive learning curve that you're not interested in learning about. The 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 metaphor I often use is is if anyone's ever, ever read Isaac Asimov's The I Robot series, the protagonist in that in that film or book series suddenly realizes that there is a problem with the robots, and the thing that he has to do is to teach it. He's he, robots have existed for generations. He doesn't even know how to dress himself anymore because it's been done with the assistance of robots for his whole life. And so his way of rebelling against the system is to teach himself how to dress himself in the morning without the help of a robot. So <laughs> this is this is the problem we are all in, in the financial system and, and in the political system and in caring for ourselves and in mental health. And even when we try to organize away from these kinds of things, the pervasive ignorance that has existed that is purposeful <clears throat> is still going to affect us. And so for me, all of this stuff is banning to get it to educate as opposed to almost anything else. So does that give you a, does that answer your question, Walter? Um, no, not particularly. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. Because, no, that's quite all right. Um, because, like I said, um, I'm only interested uh, to figure out about DAOs. And, um, you know, again, I'm still looking for a successful way to build DAOs. And it would help if I actually were to find a successful DAO, and I'm yet to to have that wonderful experience. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Uh, then turning around and looking at these, uh, I just haven't seen at that time in those ecosystems any progressing. Forget about sustainable and somewhat successful, but even like first month type of activities, any cause-based or political action does, and you would think, and not, it just doesn't seem to, to be the vehicle. Well, I see a DAO as a digital intentional community, right? 
and most intentional communities either a centralized premise or and it also depends on what you define success with right so you know how is it that you define success success according to the current setup or success according to um, the delta of change success according to the end result like you know, I mean, one could say that a revolution is a is a success, right? So, you know, you've had uh, let them eat cake, and then they, you know, now France is re re revolutionary, but but th they didn't they didn't change anything really. There was no underlying change in the structure of that. You know, yeah, the Russian Revolution, but then what really changed there? Nothing. Do you know what I mean? Like like you just re they're just reproducing the system with different people at the top of it, right? Uh, using different pretexts for the same abuse, right? So <clears throat> you're calling yourself comrade, whatever, but are you <laughs> right? How are you? You're still above everyone else, right? So, so I guess you know, I'm just pointing out my my view of both intentional communities, which I have uh, 20 years experience at, and and uh, and DAO. So I do think um, it really depends on what you're version of success is right <clears throat> if success is just you know throw the bastards out and you're just recreating the system i don't know that that's success but i guess we can all um have different definitions for that so any other questions please i'd like so following on that line of thought oh yeah so is go ahead success defined by uh the dao membership uh, which would be my preference or by some perception of the ecosystem or by some wider whatever societal means and mm. of course to me the autonomous and kind of self-governing self-determined uh, approaches would imply that the totality of membership in this organizational structure should be defining of their just like they're defining their goals that should be also defining of measuring successes yeah i i totally agree with you all i'm just making an observation about is just that all of the groups that i've seen that jump out of the step one into step three saying that we're gonna do all this ourselves and everything else without a kind of requisite wisdom and understanding of what it actually takes to get there end up sort of failing by their own measurements later on and then they also don't have any idea why it failed <laughs> right they, they're just very unconscious about well you know we we thought we did everything <clears throat> right and and uh but but it wasn't it wasn't enough go ahead uh, juan yeah i i also think <clears throat> that we are living history in the making Mm -hmm. And that right now, um, like there are multiple formulas to create a DAO, but but we are still uh, continuing in the iteration and the evolution because we find ourselves with these really powerful tool toolings, but we find ourselves reproducing the same culture. So um, also we cannot. Uh, give all of our um, hopes to the technology because right. technology is blind and who gives uh, the sense of technology is the humans behind it. So working on, on, on the humans is, is the way that we think that uh, we will end up eventually finding the best recipe um, for these new institutions. But um, yeah, it's, it's just an intentional change that needs to be done in the humans so that the technology can, can, can be used um, ethically and, and uh, for the impact and of the well-being of humanity. And this reminds me of Astra Taylor's work, A-S-T-R-A, -A, Astra Taylor. She's a person who's written a couple of books and has a couple of um, movies, uh, like documentaries about democracy <clears throat> and uh she did a great uh interview on cbc radio you might want to look that up cbc radio astra taylor and i think the title of it is democracy may not exist but we'll miss it when it's gone you know the way that i describe sort of uh, people talk about democracy like it's an object when in fact it's a kind of um <clears throat> tensegrity system 
right? It's a system that mains it maintains itself through tension. So if you, the metaphor I always use is if you pick up a, a handful of sand, right? If you squeeze it too hard, like an authoritarian, then it runs through the, your fingers. If you just let it out too much, you know, like an anarchist would, you know, then the sand also runs through your fingers. There's a kind of um, uh, a, a perfect amount of tension which exists to maintain the integrity of the thing. Do you know what I mean? And that that changes because there are all the time pieces of sand being added <laughs> and people, pieces of sand being being moved out of the thing. So you have to have kind of an appropriate way of dealing with that. So. <clears throat> and and this funny thing is, is that the human body is also a Ted Segrity system, maintains itself against gravity through through tension. And there's there's systems that like Ostrom. So if I'm squeezing here, I'm putting in a lot of power. But the thing that's monitoring, the mutual monitoring system, is actually the parasympathetic nervous system inside. So I find that there are parallels between society and and the nature of physics and other things too. And I think we we should probably you know be more mindful about obeying some of those <clears throat> structural things because the way the unity shows up in the duality. You, you need to be able to find that. And that for me is my physical integrity is maintained by the unity of, of the opposites as it stacks up through my whole body. And so when I teach yoga, I often teach about that, but it's true mentally, it's true societally, it's true. And that's why I came down with this left and right brain. Hatha yoga is about sun, which is the left brain. Ta, uh, ha, which is the sun and left brain. Ta, which is moon. And so that's, you know, that's the psychology, but it's also physiology. And so from my perspective, you, you need to stack all of those things up in a coherent way to make it work. So, um, yeah, and, and again, it is evolving all the time, but many of the forces are the same. So even if I evolve and end up with six arms instead, you know, a thousand generations from now, gravity's still all going to be here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And my, I'm still going to have to move all of those arms <laughs> in the same way. So, you know, anyway, so uh, I hope that's not too obscure a metaphor, but are there any other questions or, or anything else? Uh, Bruno, I see you, Zeptimus is here, Ugo's here. You have questions or comments? Um, I don't really have any questions, but I, I do have a comment as far as just stressing like the importance of everything that you're teaching here regarding uh, DAOs. I know even within, um, you know, the just the word decentralization on 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 its own is you know kind of gives that inner out you know type of you know focus on the inside and push out. And, and, and you really do see it. It's very evident when it comes down to dealing with people because I'm, you know, I'm in a DAO, 40 acres DAO that like is, you know, pretty much focused on, you know, people of color. So a lot of those, um, a lot of those problems that you, you face uh, within uh, like the community, uh, you, you face everyone, <laughs> you're gonna face within business with their, you know, no matter what your DAO is doing. And I see that right. from down to down, you know, it doesn't even matter. So I just, I just wanted to, you know, say, obviously, we, I appreciate everything that you're doing here. You know, everyone who's listening, understand, like, if you are trying to get a DAO open, you know, and to start a DAO, these things are extremely important when it comes down to community building, especially when, when, it's, when it's a legitimate community. You know, if you want to come in and make a fake DAO, and like close everything off and make everything, you know, yeah, that's 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 a lot easier than what's going on as far as uh that, that's why these things are so important. That's why you don't see things like this within regular structures, because it, it's not new, it's not common. They don't really care that much about what the individual is doing, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, no one's caring for the commons, right? So you have to care for the commons, the individuals, and the systems all simultaneously. You have to do all three of those things, right? So it seems to me that um, that in our society, we basically we set up asymmetric systems that cares only for maybe two thousand people around the whole world. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> and all the other systems are set to supplicate and aggregate wealth for and power and, and influence for that small group of people. And so 
you know, decolonization is about sort of, yeah, decentralizing, recontextualizing. You have to do all of those things at once. And you can't just show up in a place and go, yay, we're all together and we all look the same. So we should be able to accomplish, <laughs> you know, the healing, the all of these things all simultaneously. That just, you know, that's, it, unless you're intentional and that you've, you've, you've inventoried the whole space, you know, about what it's going to take to get there. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be much more of a challenge because that gives an opening to the, the extractive abusive side to either show up unconsciously within you and you'll sabotage your own interests uh, un unconsciously. Or, I mean, there's just so many ways in which, um, you know, the, the, that system is set up to prevent um, dissent or, or anything else, you know? So <clears throat> it's a very big challenge. And so, and it is complex, right? Cause life is complex and the colonized systems have had 500 years to set up these unequal asymmetric systems, you know, for us. So we have to do something about trying to make sure that we catch all of the tricks, right? So it's a little bit like a magician in a way, you know, the thing that you experience on the one side of it is magic and you have no idea how it happened. It doesn't make sense. But for a magician, it's just a series of technical steps, right? And so for me, what I'm, I'm interested in is creating uh, uh, an environment in which people can become magicians where they see the technical steps, but they also enjoy the creation of, of that feeling of magic in other people, right? And, and so, and then at the same time, hey, you know what, L let me come tell you how it's done. <laughs> and so that you don't fall for the trick uh, every time, <clears throat> right? It doesn't mean you you can't enjoy the magic of the series of technical steps or the practice that it takes to be good at them, but it just means that you're not a fool about it. What's up, Russ? I think um, we can wrap up this session. Okay. Thank you, Durgadas, and yeah, thanks everyone for staying. And um, I hope you you like this, and uh, we see you in the next week uh, on the next uh, session of the Graviton training. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Walter, for your great questions, and everyone who asked questions. I appreciate that. Thanks, everyone. See you later. See you later. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.